I am Bert, Victor Echo 2 Zulu Alpha Zulu. I have had a few requests to describe my 3.2 meter dish antenna for 1296 MHz EME or Moon Bounce. So here's a tour of my setup. This is a former TVRO dish with a diameter of 3.2 meters or 10.5 feet. The F to D ratio is 0 0.38 and the calculated gain is 31 dBi. The dish feed is a VE4MA style feed providing circular polarization with separate transmit and receive ports. You're looking at the receive port side. And now the transmit port side. The choke ring is called a superscalar ring. Now we see the feed aperture with the superscalar ring surrounding it. Inside, the two probes and the two rows of polarization screws. The receive front end consists of a coaxial relay for extra transmit to receive isolation and two stages of very low noise preamplifier. Combined preamplifier specs are 34 dB of gain and a noise figure of less than 0.5 dB. These components are located inside a watertight food container. The received transmission line is 3 meters of LMR400 coaxial cable, followed by 23 meters of LDF4 heliax cable connecting to the radio. The four feed arms are made of angle aluminium and are bolted to the dish using angle brackets. By the way, I use stainless steel bolts and nuts everywhere. The dish mount is a standard TVRO polar mount. Mine can tilt from 0 degrees to almost 90 degrees, something other mount designs cannot normally do without modification. This allows me to steer the dish in both azimuth and elevation as the moon progresses in its path. This type of tracking is called azimuth over elevation. The main difference is that it is the elevation axis that is referenced to the mast. To make things less confusing, I call the two tracking axis inclination and rotation, as shown here in blue and red. This makes the standard azimuth elevation data provided by tracking software unusable without applying some math to it, something I do on my customized control software. I use two actuators to steer the dish. When seen from the other side, the two axes become even more obvious. Red is rotation, green is inclination. As it is, I can steer the dish over a 90 degree azimuth arc, currently favoring Europe and North America. I'm presently planning the hardware to allow to change the coverage from eastward to westward with as little manipulation as possible. The transmit coaxial line is 2 meters of half inch flexible heliax cable, followed by 22 meters of LDF 550 78 heliax cable down to the basement. Seen here in close-up is the fully weatherized coupling between the two types of transmission line. The cables are run on the ground in a temporary fashion. These cables will eventually be concealed. The two actuators, one for the rotation and one for the inclination, were recovered from a former TVRO dish installation. I use an 18-inch actuator for inclination and a 24-inch one for rotation. They are connected to a remote controller located inside the gray metal enclosure. The controller brain is a PIC microcontroller 
and it communicates with the Shack PC VR RS232 link. Actual steering calculation is made by the PC. The controller merely operates the power relay and counts the pulses. Rotation steering is shown here at twice the actual speed. Now inclination adjustment is performed. Seen from the back of the dish, a rotation movement. And now, an inclination adjustment is performed. Again, at twice the actual speed. Now at the other end, the control is performed by a personal computer running Nova tracking software on the left and my customized control software on the right. Data between the two applications is passed using the DDE channel, with Nova acting as the server and the control program acting as a client. Notice the azimuth elevation data on the left and the same data shown in the ping box of the control software on the right. The control software has a calibration section where the actuator specs are entered and where the movement limits are set. There is also a slope and offset correction field for both actuators. Now let's enable tracking. We see that the rotation actuator is moving to match the actual rotation angle to the calculated target. Then the inclination actuator moves to reach a calculated target. Note that manual steering is also possible. There you have it. I have detailed all of this on my website. If you need more info, please visit ve2zaz.net. 73